Hey, welcome to part two of Getting to Know Filmic. I hope you've watched the part one of this series where we pondered about photography and the whole concept of Filmic, what it's for and what it does. Otherwise, this might feel like a baptism by fire. Let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. So today I'm going to be mainly working on this inside and outside capture. Next time, this ultimate test of my abilities in using Filmic RGB module. Two photos that would normally be discarded if it wasn't for awesome tools we have today. We've dealt with a blown out sky in another video. You can find it in the cards at the top right corner or in the video description. Hence today we'll be looking at a few different examples. We'll start with the easier one. First, let's move to darkroom and let's evaluate the level of brokenness. Let's check what's clipped at the sensor and how much painting we'll have to do and how much salvaging we should attempt. Uh, looks pretty bad, but nothing we can't fake fix. Okay, let's start with a quick perspective adjustment. Type in perspective, turn that on, and click on all the automatic buttons. This one scans the image for straight lines, and that one corrects it vertically. I'll close that, and that looks much nicer. We're no longer feeling like ants. Next up, I'll adjust the temperature a little bit, as I can feel that the photo is slightly bluish, especially at the bottom here. I'll just increase this until we're happy. Okay, that looks about right. Let's use the color assessment mode. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a bit on the warmer side, but it was a really warm day, so I might want to convey that with my image. Next up, I'll adjust the exposure just a tiny bit. I feel like the image is a bit too bright, knowing that this is a shadow area away from the sun. I might want to make it a little bit darker. Remember that by setting the exposure, we're also picking where our neutral gray is going to be. Now we can open Filmic, something that will actually fix some of the issues with the photo. I'm going to be using Filmic V6, which is going to reach the mainstream dark table pretty soon, just so the video doesn't become obsolete a week in. I will set the preserved chrominance to no for this video. This might ruin our RGB ratios, but it's usually less noticeable than the artifacts that the other preservation methods create. That's my experience, at least. Right, on to Filmic. I'm gonna use the auto-tune levels, which did a pretty good job. I would like to adjust the contrast just a little bit. Notice how this straight line rotates around this orange dot, which is our neutral gray point that we sort of set in the exposure module. I'll move the slider to the right and watch the straight line rotate. Okay, that's a bit too much. I'll dial it back a bit. That looks about right. Reduce the latitude a bit so we get some nicer transitions. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can switch to reconstruct tab. First, we need to select the areas that we want to reconstruct. We can do that by enabling the mask preview. Right now, nothing is selected, so the reconstruct tab is basically disabled. I will start walking back the threshold slider until we get white where there was significant overexposure. Okay, I think it's right about here. Then, using the transition slider, I can sort of feather my selection. Usually, adjusting the transition until I can vaguely see the rest of the image works best from my experience. Like that. 
Okay, we can disable the mask. That got rid of a little bit of pink we had before, which means we're doing something right. Now we have these three sliders that will help me hide my mistake of overexposure. I'll zoom in just a little bit so we can see better. The first slider is structure versus texture. Structure and texture are reconstruction strategies. If we move this slider over to the structure side, we're basically saying we don't care what's in the middle of the patch we are reconstructing. We just want a smooth in painting, a smooth gradient. That works great with things like overblown skies. Whereas the texture strategy attempts to recover and creates detail. This might be useful for things like skin or textured surfaces. I'll be honest, I've never had a case where going full texture was better than structure. Understand that texture mode attempts to recover detail from unclipped channels, but that has never yielded me any results that I was satisfied with. Therefore, I either keep this at zero or lean a little bit to the left. I think zero is fine in this case. Now for Bloom versus Reconstruct. I've noticed that blooming works very well when it comes to skies and the sun, for example. However, with objects that are illuminated by a bright light, I find that keeping to the right yields better results. I'm going to keep that at 100% reconstruct. Lastly, gray or colorful details. This one is easy. I almost always keep the left of the slider. A portion of the capture we are trying to reconstruct almost never holds any meaningful color, as at least one channel was clipped at the sensor at the time of the capture. That means that the color information is gone and there is no point in trying to recover it. I'll go 100% gray this time as well. Job done. The pink is gone. We have this flattish white area, but I think we can fix that. First, I'll enable the color balance RGB. I'll do the quick dump thing again and just boost the global vibrance. Let's not get into the depths of color balance RGB module just yet. Okay, looks much more vibrant. Right, now we have this lovely warm sunny view, but the incoming light is very white. It is slightly uncanny and ruins the immersion. What we can do as artists, we can do some closed domain modifications. In short, I'm taking out the brush, the scarf and the beret, and I'm going to paint something on my photo. I'm going to duplicate the color balance RGB module, and I'm going to create a new instance. I'll reset it just in case, and I'm going to control and shift and click it and drag it above filmic RGB. This means that we're not influencing Filmic RGB module with this artistic adjustment and we're working with closed domain data, also known as display repaired. First of all, let's do a quick parametric mask. I'll enable the mask preview and I will invert the mask. Grab the slider and walk it back until we've selected the overexposed areas. I'll do a bit of feathering a bit of blurring, maybe a tiny bit more, walk this back a little bit, yeah I think that is okay, that will do the job. I can disable the mask preview and I'm going to go straight to the four ways and I'm going to change the hue of the highlights gain. And I'm going to change it to something warm-ish. Now what I need to do is increase the chroma just a tiny tiny little bit. Let's not overdo it and turn it into sepia. Just a little bit so it feels warmer. Okay, we can enable color assessment mode to help us judge. Okay, that's a bit too orangey. A 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that did it. I think we managed to salvage it. From an image that was about to be discarded to something that we can actually use. I'm happy with the result. Even though we only mainly touched a few modules. So color balance RGB, filmic RGB, exposure, color calibration, oh, and perspective. And that's about it. In reality, I would keep working on this image until I'm fully happy. But for the purposes of this video, I think it's more than acceptable. Next time, we'll be looking at an even more complex problem. Saturated colors in broken highlights. But that's going to be it for the part 2 of the deep dive into filmic RGB. Hope you learned something new today. I'll see you soon.